Today, folks, we're going to be, going to be taking you through Lesson 2 of SOLIDWORKS uh, Educational Manuals, uh, which is the basic functionality of SOLIDWORKS. You can see in Chapter 2, we're going to be creating a simple part uh, that has a hole running through its entirety on its length and is shelled out with fillets around every corner. Um, in your Lesson 2 book, it will take you through the creation of this part step by step with dimensions that you will need. Um, I will be working directly out of this book so any step that you see uh, is basically what you will be following. I want to remind you at the end of this lesson that it is a good idea and I, I ask that you go ahead and work with the five minute assessment as well as the um, if there's vocab for this lesson which there is. So we'll go ahead and answer these questions at the end of the, the lesson, which will help uh, everybody that in this lesson too. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch SOLIDWORKS right off the bat. And if we scroll back up to our part, um, we see that we are working within metric dimensions, working within the metric system. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is show you how to change our units within SOLIDWORKS. It's rather a simple process. Um, SOLIDWORKS will allow you to enter both metric and standard units at the same time, but if we're working entirely within metric, which we're going to be in this drawing, I recommend that right off the bat we go ahead and change our drawing units to uh, metric. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new document right off the start, and we're going to be creating a new part. So I'm going to set OK. And when my part comes up, my units and increments are going to be found under my general settings, which is directed right here. Okay, so when my part opens, you'll see my three planes. And I'm going to go ahead and hit my general system settings or system options. And under my system options, these are options that are universal to the system. Under the Document Properties tab, these are settings that are just for this actual document that I'm working within. So with this document that I'm working in, um, I'm going to change my units from inch, pounds, and seconds to millimeters, grams, and seconds. So I'll apply that. And I know some of you have chosen that you like the grid, where you could display a grid. Um, it's really up to you whether or not it's a personal preference, whether you like your grid on or off. I'm going to leave it off for the time being. If you want to, it's found under the same document settings. So I hit OK. And now you see when I sketch a line, let's just sketch a line on the uh, front plane. You see that it's showing in uh, metric measurements. I have 72, so on and so forth. And if I smart dimension this line, you will see that I'm reading within millimeters. All right. So that's how we convert between inches uh, or the standard system and to metric. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm going to delete that line and I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane. All right, and our planes become very critical in this uh, lesson where people have had mistakes shelling the incorrect face because they've worked off the incorrect planes. So I ask that you go ahead and make sure you're working on the correct planes. I'm going to create a corner rectangle on my front plane and I'm going to smart dimension it to the dimensions that are shown, which is 100 millimeters by 60. All right, that will give you a nice little rectangle to um, start off. It then asks you to extrude this to 50 millimeters blind. So I'm gonna extrude to 50 millimeters blindly. And that's the base or the, you know, of our drawing here. Okay. The next step that it's asking is that we go ahead and apply a 10 millimeter round to each one of these corners or a 10 millimeter fillet. So under my features tab, a fillet is a feature, I'm going to hit my fillet tool, fillet, and I'm going to have 10 millimeters and I'll select every edge that I want to be filleted. Now you'll notice that over here on my um, design tree, or the property manager rather, uh, it shows all four edges have been selected. 
There's also an option for a full preview. If you depress that checkbox, it will show you a preview of your edges that you've selected. And when I've typed in 10 millimeters, um, that looks correct. So I'm go ahead, going to go ahead and accept that option, which will allow that to go ahead and lock in. The next thing that we need to do is hollow out this part. This is where people make mistakes. Um, they tend to hollow this side, or this side, or this side. What I ask you to do is if you select the top, so spacebar top, that will show you the side that you need to hollow. So I'm going to look at it directly at the top, and it's asking that I shell this to, with a 5 millimeter thickness for the shell. So a new command here, we're going to hit the shell command, which is right here, under features. And the shell command works in the sense that if you type in a dimension, it will shell the entire object or make the entire object hollow with a five millimeter shell around it. Okay? Common mistake is people type in five and check this off. And you'll see that on my feature design tree, I have the boss, which is my first extrusion. I have my fillets, which are the rounds here, and I have my shell. If you look, you cannot tell this part is hollow. Until I create a section view, so if we cut this part in half, and look at it directly in half, you'll see this part is actually hollow with a five millimeter shell all the way around it. Okay. In this particular case, we want our top to be hollow. So under my shell command, if I right click and say edit feature, you'll see there's an option right here which allows us to remove certain faces. It's important that if we're looking directly at the top, we want to select this top face to remove. The difference being now we have an open container where it's actually removed that top face. Okay, so the shell command, we can actually remove certain faces. To have this object shelled. Okay, you can edit the feature and say we only want that top face removed. You could have done that right off the bat, but I wanted to show you a common mistake that people make. All right, so you should be left with something like this at this point. The next step is asking us to place on this face a circle that goes through the entire object. So I'm going to select this face and normal to it so that I can sketch directly on it. So I'll take the sketch tool. I'm going to take a circle tool. And right now I'm just going to get that circle placed. I know that the diameter of this circle is 10 millimeters. So I'll pull this out and type in 10 millimeters. And I know that it's 25 millimeters off this edge and 40 millimeters off this edge. So I'm going to smart dimension by clicking the line, clicking the center point, and typing in 25, clicking the line, clicking the center point, and telling it that it's 40 in this direction. Now you'll notice that my sketch geometry has turned black. Black signifies that it's fully defined. In other words, I cannot move this circle in any location. Um, the diameter has been set, and it's been located on the part. That circle can be nowhere else than where it is right here. If I were to delete one of these dimensions, you'll notice it turns blue because I haven't defined the height on it. Okay, So black sketches is always a good thing, um, or black sketches are always a good thing because it tells us that it's fully defined, it can't go anywhere else. Okay, so this sketch right now, I want to extrude cut that sketch. And instead of just going through this face and then redrawing over here and doing the same thing, it tells us to take it through all. So instead of blindly dragging this through, okay, I'm going to say let's go through the entire part and it'll automatically stop here. It's a good habit to get into um, of going through all if you want to go through all, not dragging it beyond the extension of our part. All right, so um, if I were blind, we could go like this and it would work. However, if I drew something on this face, we would be taking it through that as well. So through all is a better option. All right, 
And right off the bat, we have created uh, that simple lesson two basic functionality. Take a look, it's a very simple part to create. Um, and I hope this tutorial was helpful.